Hello everyone, here's Milan. As we all know, the ancient Imperial Power Supreme, the Emperor can have many concubines, the Emperor can eat and drink whatever they want, and the Emperor have the most power. And in order to get the throne, killing brothers and fathers is, is not uncommon. So there are so many benefits and pressure to be an Emperor. Then how does the Emperor spend the time of their day? Today, we're going to talk about the daily schedule of the emperor from the Qing dynasty because the Qing emperor has a formal historical records of their schedule. The emperors of the Qing dynasty had a strict schedule of work and rest. They had to get up at 4 a.m. every day and the court mates would wait for them to fresh up and then they would start reading in the morning. So if the emperor was too sleepy, they didn't feel like getting up that early, or they didn't get enough sleep. Could the emperor just not get up? Because we all know that the emperor has the most power, and the emperor can just not get up if they want to. But the truth is, no. Every morning at 4 o'clock, there will be a eunuch stand in front of the emperor's bedroom. He is responsible for calling the emperor to get up. If the emperor is still not awake, the, that eunuch will just keep calling until the emperor get up. Then someone will ask, the emperor has so much power, can he just let the eunuchs shut up? Well, the truth is, he really cannot. Because this is the rule lived by the ancestors. The emperor, if break this rule, then the emperor will be punished. So the emperor got up at 4 o'clock to read in the morning. Until 7 o'clock, the emperor will begin to deal with matters. The emperor first to read the imperial folding. Some of the problems that are not easy to deal with, it is left to the morning court and the ministers will all discuss together. At this point, most of the people are still in their sleep. So we can see that the emperor is really hardworking and then to be an emperor is not that easy. We don't tell all the daily political affairs after processing to about like nine o'clock in the morning the emperor actually start ate the first meal of his day. During the emperor's political affairs emperor, the kitchen not only to prepare the emperor's breakfast in advance, but also know in advance where the emperor dined, so in order to be deliver the food in time. The emperor is also very careful while he's eating his meal. The emperor is eating without any other people involved. There's, uh, there's also a eunuch Ta taking a meal test, it's like each dish scoop a small scoop a small spoon, and to test if the food is poison or not. After the testing, all the meal can let the emperor to choose. Then someone may someone may ask, what did the emperor eat every day? So let's also take the emperor of the Qing Dynasty as an example, the, the Qianlong Emperor. What did Qianlong Emperor eat every day? So according to the historical records, the emperor ate at a table built with very good wood and what they ate is shredded bird's nest chicken, shredded mushroom, shredded fire smoke silk, shredded cabbage, pancake, peace fruit, ate fresh product, dug with bird's nest, fire smoke slices, pig's feet, chicken wings, shredded sour crot, and so on. Tell Emperor this dinner has a total of more than 20 dishes and soup. The tableware such as spoons or like bowls used is gold and silver. And such a table of dinner, a person simply cannot eat them all. Many dishes are used to pose and then give to others in accordance with the rules of the Qing, of the Qing dynasty. The queen ate the rest of the meal, generally gave to the concubines, royal children, prince and princess, etc. And the concubines left over meals mostly given to the eunuchs. And Chello is also very extra vengeant. So how can the emperor dancing and drinking every day just like the TV show shows that we're watching every day? Then the emperor is busy until after 2 p.m. and then he will start to eat eat his lunch. So before starting lunch, the situation is basically the same as the breakfast, except that the dishes are more fancy, more generous. 
After the lunch, the emperor continued to deal with political affairs until 7 o'clock at night. Um, after eating snacks and began to chanting and reciting Buddha, bathing and going to bed. The ancient emperor ate two meals, not three meals as modern people. The emperor will only get like a little bit of snacks during the evening, but like not full, not full meal, not, not dinner like we ate today. Here we have to mention a person. It's the Yongzheng emperor of the Qing dynasty. Although 9 p.m. is the time to go to bed, but there are endless things to deal with over time. We can view Yongzheng emperor as a workaholic. It is not uncommon for him to fight at night or fighting the whole night. The Yongzheng Emperor only rests one day a year. That day is his birthday. In the Yongzheng regime in 13 years, the memorials that he has approved is over tens of millions of words. It's crazy. <laughs> Yongzheng's sons also had a hard time. They started school at the age of six every day at 3 a.m. to get up to read, wait for the teacher to come to the class. And 5 to 7 a.m., they started the class. After the class, 7 to 11 p.m., they need to wait for their father, the Yongzheng Emperor, to ask them questions to test them what they learned today and write their homework. Only a few days of each year, like the Spring Festival, the New Year's Day, and the Mid-Autumn Festival, and Dragon Boat, and also their father's birthday, like those events, they're allowed to take a break. So the emperor's son is also very hard. Then we come to discuss a topic that most people may be most interested in. It's the story of the emperor and his concubines. The emperor has many young concubines and the emperor is meant to have sons. Like the purpose of the emperor to have that many young concubines is to have sons. So, so in order to have someone to inherit the throne in the future. The emperor favored his concubines with strict limits. After the concubine went to the emperor's bedroom over 10 minutes, a small eunuch will remind the emperor, um, he's like, your majesty, pay attention to the time. Once the time is up, the eunuch will carry the concubine out. Do so for sake the emperor's body. Do not let the emperor indulge in pleasure. Um, that, that will hurt the emperor's body. And here's another rule. The ancient Chinese emperor and his concubine will not spend night in each other's bedroom because it is not safe. The emperor is sleeping al alone at night, also the concubine plus the security personnel and duty outside the house overnight. So become the emperor is not an easy thing. The emperor's own private time is very limited. Most of their day are busy. What the emperor is doing every day is basically just documented. In the Qing dynasty, each emperor has an actual record, meaning that the emperor said every single sentence is written down to a little notebook by a servant. If the emperor think he said one of the sentence is inappropriate or something that's wrong, if you want that servant to delete it, to change it, or just not write it, that's not allowed. Because the Qing emperors adhere to the idea of passing on what was actually true of them to their children and grandchildren, so that they're dissidents could observe and learn how their father and grandfathers or great-grandfathers handled things. So after watching this video, do you still want to travel back in time to become an emperor? And then someone will ask, oh, if become a emperor is that hard, it's not easy, can, can I become the emperor's son or become a con concubine? Or become the like the empress brother well will that be easier for me I both have money I have power and I'm all I'm also a high classes well will that be easier for me well that we'll talk in the next video so bye here's all the video content if you like this video please like it and follow my channel to support this video thank you see you in next video bye